We've been reporting a lot about the North Country housing crunch lately. High prices and rents, not enough homes, too many short rentals, nowhere for working class people to live. What if we flipped it and thought about what would be the best case scenario? What would your dream housing situation look like? A new project is using art and poetry to articulate those dreams and perhaps make them real. That's today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Claxton Hepburn Medical Center, dedicated to providing patient care and regional services to the people of St. Lawrence County. ClaxtonHepburn.org. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Thursday, August 3rd. First up, Congress's deadline to pass a new farm bill is quickly approaching. The legislation impacts everything from crop insurance and loans to SNAP and WIC benefits and conservation. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer visited a North Country Dairy Tuesday to underline his support for one program that, if lost, could greatly impact the region's dairy farmers. Catherine Wheeler reports. Schumer spoke at Keystone Dairy in Lisbon on Tuesday to call attention to the Dairy Margin Coverage Program. The DMC program covers farmers when the price they're paid for their milk falls below how much it costs them to produce it. It was created under the 2018 Farm Bill, which is set to expire on September 30th. We need to get this done. And there are problems in the the agriculture bill, but they shouldn't affect DMC. We ought to get this program renewed regardless of other differences that people might have in uh, the Farm Bill. Without its passage through a new Farm Bill or another route, dairy farmers lose their monthly payments. Schumer, who pushed for the creation of the DMC, says failure to renew the program could lead to supply chain issues and less milk on store shelves. If our farmers have trouble, the whole county has trouble. Um, It would disrupt and even threaten the existence of farms. The USDA's New York State Director, Brian Murray, says those economic impacts could go beyond farmers. What would small communities like Lisbon be like if there is no... Uh, dairy industry and those that dedicate their lives to it. It's you, the dairy men and women, that provide economic stability to small rural towns all across the state and the country. Right now, neither Democrats nor Republicans have advanced their version of the farm bill, and it's likely they'll miss their deadline. The dairy industry is the largest part of the state's agriculture sector, and St. Lawrence County is the third largest milk-producing county in New York. Catherine Wheeler, North Country Public Radio, Lisbon. That's our new St. Lawrence Valley reporter, Catherine Wheeler. Her first story on only her second day of work. Congrats, Catherine. If you have any story ideas for her in St. Lawrence, Jefferson, or Lewis counties, or just want to say hi and welcome, email her, Catherine at ncpr.org. <laughs> The Adirondack North Country Association and some arts groups are inviting people to participate in an art project that explores housing, housing insecurity, and cooperative housing solutions for the North Country. They use visual arts, storytelling, and poetry to articulate what our housing system needs. Last fall, families gathered at ADK Art Rise in Saranac Lake to use cardboard, crayons, and hot glue to design and build scale models of their dream houses. Todd Moe reports. If we glue a chimney on like this, it's going to stand out sideways. Is that okay, or do you want to make it stand up straight? That's Brittany Sternberg, like co-owner sideways? of ADK Art Rise. It's an art education space in downtown Saranac Lake. Tables have been laid out with tools, supplies, and lots of craft materials like fabric, paper, and yarn. She and her daughter are putting some final touches on their cardboard house, complete with a sidewalk and front lawn. Child's play? Well, sort of, agrees Sternberg. But it's also sparking ideas and conversations about what's possible in terms of more affordable housing. It's nice to be able to use art as a way to draw people in, hear their stories, hear their dreams about what housing is, and then get them started thinking about how they can bring those dreams to life. Why did you decide here at Art Rise to get involved? Well, me personally, um, I have a house that I love. My younger brother could not find housing in this area, and so he had to move away. And um, every day I feel like 
my daughter's growing up without her cousins here, and that's a relationship that I that she's missing out on. Mm. So I'm sad that you know my family had to be split apart in that way. So I, I feel like I am fortunate in my small nuclear family, but um, I know that not everybody in this area is that fortunate. At another table, Martha Spear and her young friend Taika are at work. Martha is sketching ideas, and Taika is using paper straws, yarn, and cardboard tubes to build what she calls her monster house. So what is the idea here with a monster house? There's a party going inside, and he's like, and that's and his tongue. This, oh, that's his tongue. Okay. Yeah. Tell me why you two decided to come here today. Because we really enjoy each other's company, and Taika is extremely creative, as is her sister Monica. And we love ADK Art Rise as a place to make stuff. And you have something here, if I can peek at your oh, sketchbook. Sure. <laughs> Martha's dreams for a house. Tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> chickens. We must have chickens and flowers and garlic and tomatoes and a bay window and a wood stove and... You can go around and around the wood stove. What does your house look right now? Look like right now? I live in an apartment, and it's not distinguished in any way. <laughs> this is Liz Cooper, who Hi, runs Liz. Anka. My name is Elizabeth Cooper, and I'm the executive director at Anka. And Anka's doing the cooperative housing project, and we're doing it here today with Art Rise to sort of promote the project. As far as the art, it is, you know, kind of easy to put together, right? Some scraps, and, and we can have it again. So we hope to take the houses that we, you know, had from today's workshop and bring them over to Lake Placid and hitting many of the areas, even up in sort of Plattsburgh or Messina, because that's where a lot of the people who work in Lake Placid live. They can't afford to live in Lake Placid. It doesn't exist. So it's very important that, you know, Saranac Lake and Plattsburgh, Messina, some of the surrounding areas um, get involved and realize this project's going on. For example, one of our directors has moved four times, and she's been with us for a little over two and a half years. That's a lot, but it's because she had unstable housing, you know. Liz Cooper finishes her fabric-lined dream house while her husband Chris and daughter Adeline work on an underground house with moss on the roof. It's early afternoon, and the art space attracts more visitors. I love the carpeting already on the floor. We want to make sure it's cozy. Yeah. Comfortable yeah. housing. My name is Vanessa Pillen. Where do you folks live? We're here in Saranac Lake. Why'd you bring your family here today? Well, uh, just the idea of doing something that's artistic uh, and collaborative to solve a bigger problem, I think is a really important thing to teach our kids. Um, and we're, we have a friend from school that we met to do that too. So I feel like these young minds probably think outside the box more than I ever could. And so having a hands-on project that they can do together and it can be the first step to thinking of how can this solve a bigger problem on our hands. Amid the glitter and glue, there is chatter about affordable apartments tiny houses, and an approach not yet fully developed in the Adirondacks, cooperative housing. Danny Delaney is ANCA's Entrepreneurial Economy Program Director. You know, a lot of the times when housing development is developed, um, it's developed from sort of a top-down approach where there's like an architect or folks that have like decided what this would look like, X, Y, Z. You know, there is that level of creativity in designing that space themselves. So we're excited for people to sort of start thinking about it in that way. Like, what can they bring to the table and see come to fruition? You know, even though they might not be architects themselves or know how to build it, they can. They have a vision for what they want to live in and who they want to, you know, what they want their community to look like. One of the first people that did theirs this morning, he he put on solar panels. Like, he was in fourth grade. <laughs> like, that was the first thing he thought of. Can you imagine? It's just beautiful. Almost there. Ready? There. Ooh. That's almost like building a real house. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> He's putting me to work over here. Todd Moe, okay. North Country Public Radio at ADK Art Rise in Saranac Lake. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by the Currys of Potsdam and Evan Veenstra of Gananoque, Ontario. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.